All right, now on to naming and formula writing. I'm going to use as my big example here one of the later ones. This is problem 2 105. Um, and it's one of those that kind of has the big table and it asks you to do essentially all of the naming and formula writing skills. Sometimes they give you the ion formulas, sometimes the name, sometimes the formula of the compound and ask you to fill in all the others. And so that's the one we're going to do. Formula writing is one of those areas in chapter two where some, of, some students will just pick that up right away or had good experience with it sometime in their past. Others are going to struggle mightily. This is one of those topics that just seems to be, you know, one of those that folks, you know, either, you know, get really comfortable with quite quickly or struggle with and get okay with it, but they're never going to, you know, never going to write odes to the wonders of formula writing. It's an important topic because as we've talked about in this chapter, there may be a hundred or so elements on the periodic table and they're all wonderful, but the real punch of chemistry is all the crap you can make from all those different elements and how many different kinds of things there are. And we could give them all random names, but we do have to have a systematic way of naming them, and that's what gets introduced here. And so we're talking about ionic compounds in this particular uh, question, and this is the most common one we run across here in the chapter. Remember, the ionic compounds. An element, a metal, from the left side of the periodic table combining with stuff generally from the right side of the periodic table. Metals and nonmetals forming ionic compounds. Ions, atoms or molecules that have gained or lost one or more electrons. In other words, they've got a charge on them. Okay? So, running through here, I'm going to kind of take each one of the uh, uh, entries in the table uh, separately and just go through the, the process for coming up with either the name, the formula, or what the ions are. So looking at the table here, this is what they want. This is the kind of the headings on the table. They have the word cation, which is positive ion, anion, or negative ion, and then formula and name. Okay? And in this table, they're going to give us you know, either these or just that or just this and expect us to fill in all the others. And so that's what we're going to do. Here we go. Taking the first one, lithium oxide. That's what they fill in over here. Okay, lithium oxide. Now, a couple of things right off the bat. Lithium, element in column one of the periodic table, certainly on the left side of the table, it is most definitely a metal. Oxide, oh, there's that I-D-E ending. An element, okay, element as an ion, okay? Not oxygen atom, oxide ion. Not fluorine atom, fluoride ion. This I-D-E is kind of the ending we use to say this element like sulfur has become an ion, so we call it sulfide. We don't change the name of the positive ions. I don't know why. We just don't. We change the names of the negative ions, of the anions. Okay? And this is oxygen. Oxygen sits in column six of the periodic table, and one characteristic of all of the ions from column six, they tend to form, or the elements of column six tend to form ions with a negative 2 charge. And so when I say oxide, I am almost certainly saying negative 2. When I say lithium in an ionic compound, there is its formula, Li, the symbol from the periodic table. Column 1 element, all column 1 elements form a positive charge, plus 1, written in like this. And in fact, I'll just, the plus, you can write in the plus 1, very often you just see the plus sign. So there's our cation and our anion just pulled out of the formula. And then the, they're pulled out of the name. And in writing the formula, you just have to have the charges add up to, you know, to be balanced, to add up to zero. The, you know, you can go through the long explanation of, well, we have two negatives and one positive, therefore we need two positives, and write the for, you can derive the formula that way. And there's a lot of good logic in there. But to be honest with you, uh, as, until you get kind of more used to doing that, 
The quick way of doing it is simply what's called the crossover trick. Take the number, put it down there, take this number, put it down there, change its sign, L-I-2-O. Okay. Now, don't anybody write a negative 2 down here as the subscript has a number of atoms. That's just moronic, you know. People at Georgia Southern don't do it that way. It's L-I-2-O. Other universities maybe, but oh, certainly not here. And so there is the entry for the first row of this particular question. The second row of this table. This time they give us two of these. They tell us Fe plus 2 and PO4 minus 3. Now, Fe, a symbol for iron. So the name is going to be iron something or other. Okay, but I'm going to put that in there. I know that one already. This dude, a molecule, four oxygens and a phosphorus with a negative three charge, a molecule that has gained three extra electrons. Now here, this is one of those that you really just kind of have to accumulate the database for. Okay, there are a relatively small number of ions that I asked students in my class to know about. This is one of them. Um, phosphate, it is called. Okay, and so when you hear the word phosphate, you should go, oh, phosphate, PO4 minus 3. Or PO4 minus 3 means phosphate. Okay, you just have to get those two linked together in, in your brain cells. Okay, and there's, you know, there's a relatively small number of these that I want people to be aware of. This is one of them. So I write the word phosphate over here. Now, this one has the other, what, another little naming wrinkle. And remember, there's a distinction we make between the elements on the far left side of the periodic table in column one or two, or over here sometimes in column three, and this big middle section of the periodic table. Oh my, the transition metals. <laughs> yes, iron is from the center part of the periodic table. It's a transition metal that often means its name can change depending upon the charge. There are lots of ways that we've come up with to take care of this. The, more, the most common way these days and the way our textbook talks about it is the classic Roman numeral. In other words, iron can appear to us in a number of different charges, plus one sometimes, plus two, plus three, very common, and even higher than that on occasion. I have to tell you, not just iron phosphate, because that could mean a number of different compounds. I have to tell you, because it's a transition metal, which charge I'm talking about. This is iron plus two, so I write the Roman numeral plus two in. I did not do that with lithium oxide. Technically, I could have written lithium Roman numeral one oxide in the previous one, but lithium is not a transition element. It sits in column one. It's always plus one. That never changes, okay? So there's no reason to specify the charge. Transition metals can change, so you need to specify the charge on those things. That's why the Roman numeral appears. And then the formula writing business. All the charges have to add up and balance and all that good stuff. To be honest, crossover trick. Iron, three, phosphate, and I need two of them, and yes, I know, the temptation is to write that. I have just said it's one phosphorus and 42 oxygens. Oh, no, no, no. I need two of the beasts known as phosphate, PO4. When you have the polyatomic ion and you want to indicate more than one of them, put the formula in parentheses. So there is the formula of iron 2 phosphate. Next up, they give us the formula this time. They tell us Al2SO4, put a big set of parentheses, and a 3, and asked us to work with that. Okay, well, here we go. First, looking at this one, aluminum, not a transition metal. Yay, we don't have any of that confusion about the charge. It's a member of column 3 of the periodic table, and those beasts are going to tend to form Positive three charges. Its name is aluminum. Aluminum. There we go. Then there's this thing. Now, people are going to try to call it sulfide oxide. If you do that, you're wrong. Okay, that's not what it is. Fill in your database again. SO4, right off the bat. You see that combination, and your brain needs to go SO4, sulfate, negative two. That's what it needs to do. 
Okay, that is a sulfate ion. Okay, S U L F A T E. All right, and S O four minus two. That is the formula for sulfate. P O four minus three, phosphate. S O four minus two, sulfate. Those you just got to make a part of your salt. And so there's this entry filled out. When you first look at this, you think, oh, I'm done with the table. How about that? I only had three entries. And then you look at the next column on the other part of the page, the way it's arranged, at least in my edition of the textbook, and you go, ah, oh, the table goes on. And it does. And so here comes the next one. The next one, they give us the name again. They say copper. They put a Roman numeral, and they put a two in there. And then they say nitrate. Okay. Oh, here we go. Roman numeral. We are dealing with... Dun, 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 transition metal, and sure enough, copper does come from the center section of the periodic table. It is Cu, okay? And now, what charge do we put on it? Remember, transition metals, the charge can vary sometimes. That's why we have to tell you, and we've told you. Plus two. Nitrate, database! Nit you know, phosphate, PO4, minus three. Sulfate, SO4, minus two. Nitrate, NO3, minus. Okay, that's part of the database here. And then the formula, crossover, <laughs> copper, one of those, nitrate, two of those. And, you know, at a lesser university, they just put the two in. And at Georgia Southern, of course, we put in the whole parentheses. There it is, copper two nitrate. Next, they give us a couple of ions. Cr plus three, iodide minus. All right, we orient ourselves on the periodic table. We find this thing. That's chromium. Transition metal. Oh, man. Chromium. Transition metal. Roman numeral three. This thing. Ah, an element that is formed in uh, an ion. Not one of the polyatomics. An element that is formed in ion. I is iodine, so the element negative ion is iodide, okay? Iodide, chromium-3 iodide. Formula, Cr1, iodide-3. Oh, there it is, beautiful. This time, we're given a formula, clo Two. Now, this one, this ion is not one of the more common ones uh, here, but the text does give its name and formula. This is the chlorite ion here, and so I'm going to go ahead and just I've identify that at C-H-L-O-R-I-T-E, okay, polyatomic ion, CLO2 minus, so yeah. Phosphate, PO4 minus 3. Sulfate, SO4 minus 2. Nitrate, NO3 minus. Chlorite, ClO2 minus. Oh. Then we got this beast here. Now, MN. This one is a common one to get screwed up. This is manganese, not magnesium. Okay, so be a little bit careful. They have similar names. This is manganese. Manganese, da -da -da -da, it is a transition metal. Therefore, man ganese and we're going to have to put the roman numeral in question is what roman numeral mm. mnclo2 now the chlorite has the negative one charge the formula is given to us this way hmm just one chlorite in fact you could write it this way if you wanted to. Ones are typically not written, but writing it out in complete form, one manganese, one chlorite, yeah, that's got to be plus one. Okay, just reversing the crossover trick. One, one. Okay, manganese, one chlorite. And there we have that formula. The next one, they gave us a name, ammonium. Carbonate. Ah, now, 
I should send you off on a wild goose chase to find ammonium on the periodic table. It's not there. Remember, these two are both polyatomic ions. Most of the polyatomic ions are negatively charged. Carbonate's one of them. Phosphate, PO4 minus 3. Sulfate, SO4 minus 2. Nitrate, NO3 minus. Chlorite, ClO2 minus. Carbonate, CO3 minus 2. Okay, that's part of your database. Most of them are negatively charged. There's only one common positively charged molecule that has lost an electron. It is the ammonium ion. It has the formula NH4 plus. Okay, one of the only polyatomic ions with a positive charge. And then writing in the formula, we do have to do the crossover trick again. One carbonate, but two ammoniums. If I need two ammoniums, polyatomic parentheses, two CO3. And there is my ammonium carbonate. Whew, man. One more to go. This one, zinc perchloric. They write in the name again. Zinc perchloric. All right. Now, zinc. Ah, that is an element. We write in its symbol over here. We're going to put charge in in a moment. Perchlorate. Yep, another one of the polyatomics. Oh, consulting the database. This one is ClO4 minus. Okay. Now, looking at the uh, formula here, this one is, I, I kind of wish the textbook were a little more consistent about it here. Technically, I would have preferred it if they had written zinc 2 perchlorate. Okay. In that zinc is at the end, but it is in the transition metal series. And we tried usually to use Roman numerals for them. They didn't in this case, but it is plus 2. Mainly what they're uh, revealing here is that zinc is in the transition metals, but it is almost unheard of for it to be in any other charge but plus two. Um, and so they're kind of expecting you to just kind of know that. And so there it is. I've told you about it. But I would, you know, at the beginning, at least in a Gen Chem text, I wish they'd be a little more consistent and say, hey, that's a transition metal. It ought to have a Roman numeral in there even if zinc is always going to have Roman numeral two, okay? That's just one of those little bits of lore that you just kind of pick up over time. So there it is. That's why it's not written in, okay? And I'll go ahead and take it back out because this is what the textbook kind of presents us. But it is making the assumption you know or have been told in the past that zinc, even though it's a transition metal, is always plus two. Once you have that, then the formula itself is actually pretty simple. Zinc perchlorate crossover trick. I'm going to need two of those. And there is the entire formula filled out, or the entire table, excuse me, filled out uh, completely, where you write them from the uh, charges on the ions, or from the entire formula, or from the name. Okay? Given any one of these bits of information, Yes, you do need to be able to crank out the other two pretty readily. It requires you to know a little bit about from the periodic table, column one plus one, column two plus two, column seven negative one, column six negative two, that type of basic information for elements. For the transition metals, the modification of the Roman numerals that has to be gleaned from the formula or directly from the information given. And then the database of information on polyatomic ions in particular, uh, you know, phosphate, PO4 minus 3, sulfate, SO4 minus 2, nitrate, NO3 minus, perchlorate, ClO4 minus, carbonate, CO3 minus 2, that kind of thing. Um, if you know that information, and yes, there are hundreds of ions known, but this is why I ask you to confine yourselves to, you know, this table, you know, if found in the text and the ones in bold. Uh, given that information, you can do an awful lot of naming and formula writing and get pretty good at it pretty quickly. So go forth, practice some of this stuff, and commit these to your database. See you later.